Hey y'all, hello, welcome back to Simply Living Podcast. I don't know if I've ever introduced myself, but maybe I have, I don't remember. What? I was going to say, I'm Cody. Uh, and I'm Joshua, I'm back. <laughs> yes, Joshua's back and he has yeah, joined me in what we're going to talk about today, which is taking care of yourself and health and just the importance of taking care of yourself and health means it means physical it means mental it means spiritual it means emotional so just taking care of yourself why does that matter and why does that matter to simply just live like one you can't live if you don't take care of yourself and then you die so that's the simplest (laughs) answer with that (laughs) that's the first point but I, I found I was looking through my journal Um, And I wanted to kind of bring this in real quick because I don't know if I've ever said it. I was looking through my journal about when I was first praying about and thinking about starting this podcast. And something I wrote um, as I was reading a devotional by Eric Gilmore is like simply living or like simplicity of life is means that all your attention is on God, loving him and loving and living for him alone unconcerned with anything else but him and being close to him so that's the point it's like we live for god and that means just what it says like we actually live for god and that's it nobody else and that's what our focus in life should be but often i guess um we think it should be filled with other things but yeah no i mean i think that's a great summation of what simply living is i mean all that matters is Jesus. I mean, there, I think there's a scripture that says, you know, Christ is in all and and is all or something. I don't know. I have to look <laughs> it up. But basically, it says at the end, Christ is all that matters, right? Mm, so, what what we what we do, what we say, what what we're living. There's a great quote by Leonard Ravenhill that says, "Are the things you are the things you are living for worth Christ dying for?" Mm. Are the things you're living for worth Christ dying for? And that is basically to say, at the end of the day, Jesus is all that matters. Christ is all that matters, right? So we want to make our life, if you want to make your lives actually matter, live for Jesus. Yeah, live for Jesus. I might, I might want to say that a different way. That sounded kind of final, but. Sure. Because, I mean, does your life not matter if you don't live for Jesus? Well, I'm thinking about what we just read in Ecclesiastes, and he was like, guys, I've done all the things, right? I've partied hard, I've had Mm. the girls, I've had the money, I've had, I've done all the things, right? And in the end, I've discovered that life is meaningless, and what brings meaning, or the only meaning is the fear of God. Yeah, but that word, though, that word meaningless, like, when we translate it, it's often been translated to, like... Oh, true. mean like vanity um vapor but it also yeah it really the the word like it literally means vapor oh, like it's true. all just like fleeting it's just fleeting it's like temporary. chasing the wind yeah like it's temporary so because he goes on to say and like throughout ecclesiastes like the stuff that he was chasing even like wealth wealth isn't meaningless if it's paired with mm. you know christ God, yeah. like that's what brings so i guess you can go that way like with Christ at the center, then all the stuff that, you know, Solomon or most people attribute that to be Solomon is writing that um, was chasing, you know, they matter when Christ is the end goal, not your own, like, self-seeking mm-hmm. pleasure, I, I guess. Yeah, because I guess because when you're doing it for God and what he's actually calling you to do and doing all those things for him, it's going to help build the kingdom and bring him glory and bring in more people into the church versus bringing yourself mm-hmm. glory which ends up making not working first of all and and being pointless and you don't feel fulfilled because you're created to worship and anyway and anyway doesn't I, it's just it. that word matter because i was thinking like you like you mat like you still matter like jesus cares about you even if you're not following him mm. like so that if you didn't yeah, matter to god then that that would give people you know who aren't like believers they'd be like well what is the point like i don't even matter you know what i'm saying like i don't want that to be the message yeah so what was the first (laughs) can you repeat again what you said when you said i said if you want your life to matter you follow Mm. jesus so i guess it's like 
maybe it's that you matter as a person, but what you do and or have been doing doesn't. If it's not, for that's Jesus. true. Yeah. So if you want what you do in life to matter, yeah, there it follow is. Follow Jesus. There it is. Thanks. So I went off into a little rabbit no, trail that's it, away from it, your point. <laughs> that felt off when I said it, but that's I think that's what I meant. Okay. See, that's okay. why we got to do this together. Okay. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Anyway, that was so that's the point of simply living. <laughs> <laughs> Back to getting healthy. <laughs> So basically, yeah, we just want to talk about, like, why does it matter for us to take care of ourselves and for us to be healthy? So when we think about living for Jesus, if, say, for example, if I didn't take care of myself, right, I ate whatever I wanted without mindful or without keeping in mind what my body actually needs to stay alive, to be well, to be healthy, to have energy, to... Um, what what I eat and what and how I like move and stuff dictate or um, affects how I think and my mental health and everything as well. So um, and it, if what I watch and what I do and li- like and what I like uh, consume and and uh, who I'm around if 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 I did anything that I wanted or felt like I don't know I just felt like or I don't know and I didn't keep that in mind. Um, one. Mm-hmm. My physical health is poor, so I cannot do as many things as I could if I was healthy. Right. So if God calls me to do, I don't know, uh, I don't know, like do construction. Yeah, construction, or like do a bunch of like a, something that whatever He calls me to do, it it um, requires a lot of physical work. Right. Or possibly a lot of like moving around, a lot of events, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I'm not really that capable or able because I am in and out of the hospital or I'm like bedridden or I like just don't have the energy for it or whatever it is or I won't live as long to be able to do it for as long as he wants me to Mm -hmm. you know you can ask like it's like he wants you to live long but I'm not taking care of myself to do it and or I'm not asking God to help me take care of myself to do it Mm -hmm. and if I'm not trying to help with my mental health and then it's the same thing I'm not as motivated or I'm stressed or I'm like focused so much on the anxiety or the stress or whatever it is Mm -hmm. that I'm not listening i'm not even motivated or listening to god for like what i should be doing or Mm. wanting to receive his peace or whatever and obviously a lot of this isn't on necessarily i can't i can't like necessarily push the anxiety away and that's it like i need god to help me but that's gonna be something i should be aware of to seek god for help and counseling and things like that yeah um and spiritual health i mean that's a given if i am not if i'm not working my spiritual health reading my bible praying Mm. for like um worshiping recognizing who god is putting myself down as low and like humbling myself through worshiping god to Mm. recognize who he is and that i need him then obviously i can't live for christ or jesus and i'm not going to have peace at all because uh, then the world the world is going to catch me i'm going to be focused on the world and it's the world is chaotic and crazy you Mm. know what i mean i can't i can't take on jesus easy yoke and light burden um, so it's like when you don't when you don't actually focus on and try to take care of yourself well and on your health, then you can't really live for Jesus to the best that you can. Like you can't. It's not as simple as just living for Jesus because now you got all these other issues and all these other problems mm-hmm. that you have to like face. Hmm. I don't know. This is just me off the top of my head. No, that's good. Okay, praise God. I was yeah. I'm sorry because I'm sitting here looking at her like. Are you done? I know. And, <laughs> but I was like, and then this, and then this. I was, I'm really looking at you because, okay, so Cody does this thing that when she's thinking, she'll stare right at you. <laughs> and so I picked up this habit now is that when I'm thinking, I'm like looking at her, but I'm thinking about something else. <laughs> yes. So I'm like listening, but I'm also thinking like, oh, it's a good thought. <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's what's happening, you know, over on this side of the mic. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you know what's happening. All right. But that was great. Thanks. Thanks. Praise God. <laughs> um, and it wasn't even, I mean, it was this one thought when you were saying like all this stuff about our, our physical health, our mental health, our spiritual health, you yeah. know, it made me think like all of these things are for the most part difficult to do in the moments, but they, they bear like positive long-lasting consequences like they're difficult now but they're they last they're they're good the the results are good the consequences are good good. when you flip it like i I, we talk about sin i thought the other day mostly all sin feels good in the moment Mm -hmm. 
but it bears the opposite way. Like it mm-hmm. sucks afterwards, mm-hmm. and then like you know you're gonna you, you feel guilty, you feel shameful, like whatever it is. You all these you can go down the list of all the cons all the way up to death. You know, you know. Anyway, but you know I just had that thought like when we are talking about being healthy. I the first thing I thought about was food. Like junk food tastes amazing in the moment, <laughs> but it makes you feel terrible. Yeah, healthy food. Sometimes to me, I'm like, why are you putting spinach in my smoothie? I don't want to drink that. I want to eat this grass. Like, what? So it tastes like I'm eating grass in the moment. But in the long term, like, you know, how real can we be on here? (laughs) I mean, why not? I mean, it's not like you're going to say I was going to say, no, no. I was going to say, you know, when I'm eating raisin bread and and drinking these smoothies, these green smoothies, my toilet time... It's like cut in half. <laughs> I'm so efficient. <laughs> I'm so efficient. <laughs> I'm just being real. Oh, I never thought of that as efficiency. <laughs> you can, I'm telling oh, you. Oh my goodness, again. You want to accomplish a mission. <laughs> Get some fiber in your diet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's true. Thanks, babe. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're talking about being healthy. I don't No, that's true. That's what you said. That's being healthy because... I mean, to your point, like, a lot of times with being healthy, it takes work now to pay off later. Whereas if you're trying to not be healthy and just get with tastes good now or feels good now, like laziness or, like, just sitting there or, like, not eating well or whatever, it feels good now or tastes good, but in a moment it's not. Or even later it's not. It's not going to pay off and you're going to regret it. Mm. Do we want to be older and healthy and well, could still move around and walk, or do we want to be, you know, not being able to better what? what I had this thought when you were saying that you're right and I had this thought about like okay so you know how our flesh and our spirit are at war with each other in case you're listening you didn't know that your flesh and your spirit are at war they don't like each other the flesh doesn't want to do what the spirit wants to do spirit doesn't want to do what the flesh wants to do and we're we're stuck in the middle and we have a choice to either gratify the flesh or gratify the spirit right that's what we live. That's that's literally your decision every day. You're going to wake up. You know, are you going to do what the flesh tells you to do? Or are you going to do what the spirit tells you to do? And there's going to be a war because one's going to be fighting the other. So anyway, um, I thought about health. And I feel like, I don't know for sure, but I feel like being healthy is what your spirit wants. But it's not what your flesh wants. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's so true. Like, I thought about... Like I, I back to food because I do like to eat. You know when it's when it's good food when it tastes good when it's when it tastes good. Okay, okay. But I like okay. food that tastes good, right? But I thought about like food. How, I don't know how to explain it, but I thought about like gluttony and greed and lack of self control mm-hmm. can all happen with food, mm-hmm. like all those things. But yet, you know, the spirit is about patience and self control. Mm-hmm. Mm. And being unselfish, like it's the opposite. Mm. And typically, those things are associated with like eating better. You got to be patient, and you have to have self-control, and you got to be, you know, unselfish. You got to sacrifice. You know, I don't know. It's just a thought. Yeah, it's like um, you can't just eat whatever you want. Sorry. No, no, no. Yeah. Go ahead. No, sorry. I was gonna go off of that in terms of like, in terms of like, say for example, you have to be patient. If you want to eat healthy, you have to, one, oh, it's multiple things. Instead of eating hot Cheetos or, like, chips and stuff like that, because, like, you're hungry, so you want to eat something now, and you know that chips taste good, so I'm going to eat it now. You'll make a meal that's good for you. Mm. And that takes time. Yeah. But it does pay off, especially if it's a good meal. You probably would prefer that over those chips you just ate, but you were hungry then, and it makes you feel worse now. And chips don't even actually give you any nutrients so it doesn't actually fill your stomach Mm. if that's why you're still hungry like there's so many things about chips so in other words you (laughs) eat and you 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 eat some more and you eat some more and your mouth is burning from the hot cheetos because it tastes good but it's hot (laughs) but you want to keep eating it and yet you're never full Yes. Yes, that's correct. That's true. Hmm. And another thing with patience is like, 
say so when it comes to healthy food you also have to wait for the healthy food to grow like i mean mm. we live in america and we have a walmart so we don't necessarily but in general you know, like in in actuality yeah. like reality like you would have to wait for your your green plants to grow your strawberries your fruits and all that stuff like to be able to enjoy it to be able to eat it versus like something you can make with sugar and mm. you know i guess you have to wait for sugar to grow but you mm. know what i mean like I don't know. Those. No, you're <laughs> well, right. That's, that's yeah, because I mean, you could we could grow stuff in a lab, like that's true. Yeah, that doesn't take long at all. Yeah, you know, mass produced. I mean, unfortunately, we kind of do that with when we eat it. I mean, yeah. with food that grows in the ground too. Yeah. But oh, yeah. something. Well, anyway, we do. Oh, okay, I think so. I don't know. I don't know either. You saw how big those grapes we got the other day were. <laughs> I thought that was made in the lab as GMO, or is that something in the? That's ground? what I'm saying. I don't know how that works. But they were huge. Anyway. I was like, what? Thanks. <laughs> but, um, I mean, yes. And I was going to go back to your finished comment about your smoothie. Oh, Lord. You've had smoothies with vegetables in it, and it would taste good. From, like, when you go to a smoothie place, you've had it in there. I think. <laughs> <laughs> It's all uh, about tasting good. You can't make food taste good. I just have, don't have all the ingredients for that or perfected it. I'm saying, but you're drinking spinach, though. But well. you don't notice. Who doesn't notice? If you have enough fruit in there. Or you can do something to it. Add sugar. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. We're supposed to be talking about eating, being healthy. One day, you'll appreciate spinach. I, I do like spinach. I'm, I like oh. spinach. I do. Okay, sure. I will say, I, I did not expect this out of myself because I've eaten spinach now for so long, so many years. Okay, I mean, well, I've eaten spinach my whole life, let me be real. But in terms of intentional, like, that's my only salad, really, is, like, spinach and maybe some other greens. It's been some years. And I just recently, we had, we got green leaf lettuce last week, I think. Yeah. For salad instead of our normal spinach mix. Mm-hmm. And when I say I did not like it. I was like, this is bitter. Like, mm. what in the world? I don't miss yeah. my spinach. And I was like, what? I like spinach now? Instead of this? <laughs> like, it's so, it tastes like so bitter. Anyway. All right. So, that's, uh, that's <laughs> to say that it can grow on you. So, don't give up. <laughs> All right. So, eat your spinach. I don't, back to, back to, uh, the what's our topic? The importance so what's of it? health. It's important. Taking care of yourself. You know what I just thought about? When we think about taking care of ourselves, right? If, the, if there's no other reason why it's important, it's because that we don't own our bodies. Yeah. Like, when we think about mm-hmm. our lives, everything in our lives as gods, because everything is, you know... Lay it all down, lay it all down. Gods. Lay it all down, lay it yeah. All down. It's not so. Everything was created by him and for him, through him, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know that song, but... Oh. Okay. I mean, yeah, lay it all down. All right. I, I, <laughs> it is a song. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> but I was just thinking, like, if there's no other reason, like, you're you're managing a body that doesn't belong to you. You know what I mean? Like, you don't. It's not even like it's your body, but like it's not your body. Yeah. Like it's your life, but it's not your life. Yeah. Like we're just we're just managing it. We're just stewarding it. Yeah. So. It's to like, will. yeah, it's, and it's the Holy Spirit's dwelling place, and yeah, it's like if know. someone told you to watch their kids. Oh wait, this might be a. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good example because if you <laughs> you mm. wouldn't you wouldn't blatantly though like go out of your way to like destroy someone else's kid's health when they specifically told you what to feed them. Yeah. Like, this is, please don't give them any of this. Unless or, maybe if you're a grandparent. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Jesus, help me. Help me. <laughs> like, we're only going to give you ice cream and candy for dinner, lunch, and breakfast. <laughs> like, so what? Bro, yeah. Why is my kid throwing up and sick all week now? <laughs> like, uh. But anyway, but you know what I mean? Like, we're managing these bodies. So, like, we should take care of them because they don't they don't belong to us. Like, yeah. we're just trying to, we're trying to keep it, we take care of our bodies as a way to glorify God. Mm, it's like a form of worship. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Mm. That's good. Now we got to convince ourselves of this. Yeah. <laughs> 
to act it out. <laughs> Jesus, help us, please. Yes, Where Lord. that becomes more important than the taste of that slice of cake or that donut or... I mean, obviously, I'm still learning, trying to understand moderation, but at the same time, it's like, there's no benefit to a donut at all, besides the taste, I guess. Mm, yeah. And can I have something else that there is a benefit and make it taste just as good to myself, or can I train my tongue to make something else taste good after a while? If you never tasted processed sugar... Oh, stop it. I wonder if... You would never, you wouldn't even miss it. Yeah, or like you it. wouldn't even notice at all because you wouldn't have known. You have other, you have other things that taste sweet that even God's made made naturally hmm. that you can enjoy. You already know because I brought it into the home and you like it now. Dates? <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, dates are amazing. Yes, and that is literally a fruit that falls from a tree. Yeah. It's like, and it's a different flavor than like a juicy fruit. Which is like what you crave when you want a pastry or cake. You want something else that's not juicy. That at least for me. Yeah. And that's where dates came in because they're not juicy sweet, but they're a different kind of sweet. You know what I mean? But it's still yeah. a fruit. Yeah. And that's what that's what shows that we don't necessarily need processed food or processed um and processed sugar or whatever. Um, we don't need cakes and donuts when there's God's already created things that we can enjoy by our tongue. The Bible talks about all the time honey, like yeah. that we can enjoy from our tongue and it tastes good. Because I think that was the argument. It's like, well, if you totally cut out cake and donuts and all that stuff, you're not enjoying life either. Like, mm. you're just, you're kind of punishing yourself, I guess, in a way. But it's mm. like, can't we enjoy, like, healthy foods? Like, there are healthy foods that are enjoyable, but we've gotten so used to processed sugar yeah. that that's what we crave more. And it's terrible. There is mm. no benefit at all. Like, nothing. And if there was a benefit, that benefit's also in something else that's better for you. Mm. That like, is true. Sorry. Well, yeah, no, I think you're right. I was thinking about if I if I if you go to the extreme too, when we talk about the stuff we're talking about, junk food, cake, cookies, ice cream, whatever, we joke about it, but oftentimes we eat these foods. Why? When we're sad, <laughs> when we're stressed, yeah, when we're, I don't know. I guess maybe if it's a celebration, that that also happens. Like, oh, we're celebrating, so let's indulge. Yeah. But it's like it's all it's usually like to cover some some like other part like some pain or something. Like it's not even it's like to mask, like a band aid. Mm. You know? Yeah. Lots of sad movies and Yeah. Is not s- I'll go Oh ahead. no, you can go. I was gonna say this is hard for me to say because I have a sweet tooth. We we both me too. do. We were just talking about getting donuts and crumble cookie today. Today. But we didn't do it. That cheesecake in the fridge. We didn't want to drive that far. <laughs> Finished yesterday. <laughs> what about the flan? I know we still have flan, <laughs> but I've slowly been eating it. If that helps anything. <laughs> so we're saying these things. That's why we, she said earlier, "Lord help us." Yes, <laughs> live yes. It out. I'm, we're talking about all these things because we're we know this is true. It's just about believing it to move to action. I, we could even believe it. Well, it's like believing it enough for us to want to move on it. I guess, like you know what I mean. It's like. Yeah, I uh uh what were we, um mm. talking about dessert, I'm talking about cookies and cake and ice cream and I'm trying to remember what I was gonna say. Oh, taste buds! It made me think like, so God gave us taste buds. I, he didn't have to do that. Yeah. Because when you think about it, there's really no point to taste anything. If really, if food is only there for like the nutrients that you need, what is the point in taste? Well, I will say, I feel like there's some point in knowing if the food is good. Like, for example, if I'm eating a piece of moldy bread, I can tell by the taste if I didn't. But there's other signs, though, too. Yeah, but like, yeah, I guess it just helps because sometimes it's like you don't notice it right away because it's popping in your mouth or like it's underneath the bread or something like that. Yeah. So I guess like, anyway, not to to disprove anything. No, no, that's (laughs) true. Well, that's a good point. But then I thought like, well, yeah, but he also put other signs like spoiled milk. It's going to smell. That's true. Or it, the bread might feel. You might feel the fuzz. Like, there's... You, you get other senses you're able to tell if something is spoiled. But yeah. I get, like, what you're saying. Yeah. But taste is, like... You can kind of do without taste. Mm. You know? But he gave it to us for a reason, obviously. Yeah. Like, maybe it was just for our enjoyment. Like... Yeah. That's true. Because food that tastes good. Fun. Like, I'm glad that we can taste food. Because mm-hmm. I like tasting food. Yeah. 
That's true. Do you like tasting food? Yes, I do. It's enjoyable for sure. Good food. <laughs> That's true. But yeah, it does make me like want to be better. In Jesus' name, help me. In Jesus' name. But like, and I'm trying not to be like where like too strict myself where I feel guilty like after these things like but I guess that's like anything like if you sin you can ask for forgiveness like repent and stuff um and it's like when people give it to me I don't know I'm just I'm trying to learn but I think the biggest help for me is getting substitutes that are healthy for me that I enjoy so yeah. I so I'm, I'm like filled enough or like I don't cr- have to crave the sweets because I have I've already eaten something else that was better for me and like I don't even want it anymore because I'm not even hungry or like I don't need it, I guess. That's what's helped me the most when I'm yeah. getting trying to get back to that. Um, but yeah, God made made taste for a reason. So that means, well, we've seen the healthy foods that he's made from the earth can taste good. But also yeah. you can make healthy foods taste good. The Bible talks about salt. Salt is still good for you. It's just all about how much salt. The yeah. Bible talks about milk and honey, as we've seen. And the yeah. Bible talks about, um, yeah, anyway, manna that was sweet. Yeah. So, yes. Now let's get into... Okay, transition. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> well, I mean, we've just talked a lot about physical health in the sense of food and eating. Oh, yeah. So, like, there's other aspects of health, right? Oh, yeah. And I feel like... And I, I wanted to find it, and it kind of upsets me that I couldn't. May Jesus help me. And Because I can't remember the order, but I was asking God, like, why do we need to be healthy? Like, what what's the point? Like, hmm. you know what I mean? Like... Like, an actuality, and I get it, because I know for myself, this is a huge reason why I want to be healthy, to feel better, to be honest, like, just to feel better with my digestive system and just with everything, but also, like, to be able to feel well when I'm older, like, like, not be on the, like, I want to be able to run around with my grandkids or, like, take walks or, like, still do things, you know what I mean? Like, not be so restricted because of something that i did Mm -hmm. like it'd be one thing if something happened where like i just couldn't help that like you know but if i can if i can um if i can when i didn't want to say control but like if i can do my part in taking care of myself to help myself in the future and not go through certain things that is what i want to do you know so but what what i what i felt like he was saying to me which i can't find so i'm just gonna make jesus bring it back to my memory in jesus name thank you god i it was like the idea of your spiritual affects your mental which affects your physical and your physical affects your mental which affects your spiritual like it's like it's like Mm -hmm. um when you're spiritually healthy God gives you the desire to move in his will, gives you the desire to do things, <laughs> gives you peace, calms the mental health. Oh, man, it just bugs me that I can't, because I literally wrote it down. It's okay. Um, but it's basically like, how do I say this? It's like, when you're staying close to God, he gives you the desire, he gives you the motivation, he he heals you from things that gives you peace. He, you can lay all your burdens on him that gives you peace. He... Um, he gives you the ideas and all those things, right? And when you have, when it's like, when you're mentally healthy, again, you like, you're clear minded. You mm-hmm. can, you are focused on what you want to do. You don't have mental health issues in the way like depression or anxiety. You have, um, you can actually do those things. You're, you continue to be motivated. You're continue to even, you're, you're continue to even wanting to improve your spiritual walk with God. Like you're wanting to pray and things like that. Cause if mm-hmm. there's no block, it's there. And when you're physically healthy, that affects your mental man. It's bugging me though. Mm-hmm. It does affect your mental with what you eat, with what you, and how you move. And you can tell that you can see that on this TV show, like on E or something where if mm-hmm. you've ever heard of it, like where the, um, physical trainer got fat basically oh, yeah. uh-huh. to go like to, to empathize kind of and to work with the person they were training to burn off the weight with them mm-hmm. but you they even said how their mental like they felt slower they mm-hmm. felt sluggish their mental health wasn't as good like mm-hmm. they felt sadder or whatever and i felt that myself when i've eaten certain things mm-hmm. you know yeah so it, it all kind of affects each other and when you're like that you don't it's harder to pray it's because you don't have the energy mm-hmm. it's harder to do the things god called you to because you don't have the energy it's it's harder to um man you talk because i want to find it (laughs) well i mean it sounds like i understand what you're saying 
and it sounds like it's like they're all important and they all kind of affect each other mm. it's like cyclical um <laughs> but it it reminds me of like something we said i think a few episodes ago but it's like i this like your spiritual health is like really the source yeah that's like true. when it, it even though it's cyclical like if there's one place to start like yeah. your your spiritual health that's the one to like start with yeah right like that's what's going to power the the mental health that's what's going into the the physical health or the, the physical health into the mental health back to the spirit like that's yeah, where that's you true. start yeah that's because, the most important part yeah, of health yeah right i feel like, and i feel like that's what happens to to me really mm. um where i'm like oh i'm going to go i'm going to start going going to the gym i'm going to start working out i'm going to go on this diet but yet I'm not like spending time with the Lord like I should be. Mm. That diet, that workout, it's not gonna last a day, two <laughs> days. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. My mental, all over the place. Yeah. So it's like that spiritual health is key. Like that's vital. And then you know that. Yeah, that could, feeds everything else. Yeah. Yeah. And that I mean, you could put that into praying reading the bible getting discipled going to small group going to church you know i'm saying she's laughing because i'm like y'all i'm gonna be real with y'all it is hard everything i just said is difficult for me to do mm. it's hard for me to go to small group and we lead one yeah. it's hard for me to go to church sometimes I wake up like, oh man, I'm, cause I'm, all I'm thinking in the back of my head, I'm like, man, how do people get two days off a whole weekend, Saturday and Sunday? They don't have to go anywhere on Sunday. They're sleeping in today, and I hear that alarm clock going off, and I'm like, oh, we got to get up, about to go to church. <laughs> I also want to sleep in. I'm telling you, it's because you don't sleep in on Saturday. But it's a, okay. First of all, I, I'm asking. <laughs> I'm trying to understand. I'm saying no because that's my that's my flesh being greedy, wanting to sleep in mm. two days in a row. Mm, mm, mm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And we're not used to like a sleep schedule as well, which that's also part of health sleep. Yeah. If you're not used to a sleep schedule, you're not going to bed on time. Of course, you're always going to want to sleep in because mm. you're tired because you don't get enough sleep to begin with. Yeah. And possibly other areas affect also your to your cause of fatigue. Yeah. Yes. I thought you were oh, gonna say no, more. yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> I keep thought you, going. I, I cut you off. I came in, I thought you were going to say more. So. No, I'm just, I was just going to double down on like, like spiritual health is important. Mm. Like, it's so mm. important. And actually, I feel like I'm supposed to say this. Amen. I want to encourage somebody listening. Because mm. I feel like, I feel like you might feel like how I feel like. So let me let me talk to both of us. Mm. Just pray. Mm. Like I know I might feel like, oh, I don't have time. Oh, I'm not getting up as early as I should be getting up. I'm not praying mm. as long as I should be praying. I'm not reading the mm. Bible enough. Just pray. Mm. That's it. I mean, it could be, Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. Amen. Just do it. That's okay. Like, I feel like we're overwhelmed with, I got to do this devotional and that devotional and go to this service and that service and serve here and Ooh. lead this group and then go to Simply that group. Living. And then, yeah, evangelize on Friday and serve on Sunday. Like, I mean, and that's great. I'm not saying that's wrong. But I'm saying if you're, if you're you know, struggling to read the bible and now you're thinking of trying to jump into doing all of that that's a big jump mm. so i just want to i just want to encourage somebody like just pray like it's okay and when you pray feel like feel good about it like you know you pray don't let i feel like this is what happens with us right we we want to start we want to start somewhere and then we, we we take this whole like okay i'm gonna start praying i'm gonna pray for an hour a day and really we haven't prayed all a whole life and we expect that we're just gonna start praying for an hour a day holy spirit could do that the holy <laughs> spirit could do that for you and if you amen that's not that was not me that's not my case Jesus still help me so i'm like 
if you get up and you're like, Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. Amen. To acknowledge him at least. Yeah. Yes. I mean, look, that's a start. And then what's going to happen is if you're like expecting to pray an hour a day and that's all you pray, what's going to happen? The enemy's going to come at you with like, that wasn't even really a prayer. Mm. Here comes the condemnation. Here comes the guilt. Here comes the shame. And then you're going to be like, oh, I can never. How am I going to make it to an hour? Like, I could even pray two sentences. And then you're just not going to do anything at all. And that's what the devil wants. Yep. So the, the, the exhortation is to pray. Read the Bible. Read a, a sentence. I don't know. You know not even a whole verse. Anyway, I'll go on with that. No, I it's mean. It's just, 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 just start. Like, that's all I'm saying. Just start. Yeah. Like, and don't, don't stop. Like, just start and just keep going. Like, even if you say, Lord, thank you for waking me up today, and that's all you say for a week straight, okay. Mm. That's, start, keep going. And I'm telling, I promise you, like, the Holy Spirit will work, and it'll build. And then pray, you know what the next prayer you should pray after that? Lord, thank you for waking me up this day, today. And then the next sentence you should say, Lord, help me to talk to you more. <laughs> Pray, pray, ask, ask God ask to help prayer. you to pray. Yes. And watch what happens. That is so true. I'm speaking to you and I'm speaking to me. Mm. That's true. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> you said <laughs> okay. But that's true because, I mean, you're making a good point. I'm sitting here trying to find this, this, you know, what he was saying to me. One, he was saying it to me to help motivate me to work out and, like, be healthy. And I don't even remember what it was. That's... Mm. So sad. Jesus help me. But I think that's, I mean, kind of goes back to, that's why I always need to go back to him because he can just remind me again. But yeah. I think that's the most, that's the most important, the spiritual help. Yeah. Because it fuels everything else. Mm -hmm. Period. Like you're our spirit. Yeah. And Jesus is the only one that gives you strength. His power is made perfect in your weakness. He gives you strength to do anything at all. And like what Joshua was saying, that's true. It's like, that's how you build anything, any relationship, anything, yeah. like just little by little. Mm -hmm. And you can ask God for help for yes. more and more. Like yes. that's the best part about God and our, like our relationship with God versus anyone else's mm -hmm. is that we can ask him to help us to be a better like daughter or like son or like yeah. to better our relationship, to spend time more time with him to pray to to you know what i mean like yeah. to understand the bible to know how to pray um we can actually ask and he will actually deliver yes um and he could bring people to not, into our lives to help us more it's like yeah that's true because i i struggle with that in terms of like i i did used to pray for an hour and i enjoyed the hour because i saw god move mm -hmm. off awesomely in the hour and I would focus on him and lately I've been I've been struggling to wake up to be able to spend time with him for an hour mm. um and I've been like feeling terrible like, every day I'm like I'm sorry God for waking up so late I'm sorry God for mm. that I don't have this much time with you but I spent so much time saying that that I um just wasted 10 minutes mm. that I could spend with him mm. I just felt so bad but I I'm so I'm still working on that forgiveness but I think God is so happy that I woke up at all to spend time with him. Yeah. At all. Because um, he just wants to hear from me. What were you going to say? I feel like I'm supposed to say this too. Okay. Let me let me expose a oh, lie. Expose. Ooh, okay. That I feel like somebody is feeling or is hearing or believing. And mm. I did too for a long time. Sometimes I still fall to this. Mm. When you pray... When you read the Bible, if you don't feel anything, that does not mean that That's... God didn't hear you. And that does not mean that your spiritual health is not, that you're not growing. Because so sometimes I open up the Bible, I read a whole book, feel nothing. Mm. Not anything at all. I'm like, what did I even just read? <laughs> what did that do? I'm sitting there praying, don't feel a single goosebump, don't feel anything. Yeah. But I'm telling you, like, God still hears, God still sees, God still loves. Like, it's still important. 
So don't let the the lack of feeling keep you from pursuing prayer or reading the Bible or going to small group yeah. or going to church yeah. or, you know, the list goes on and on. I think that we put a lot of weight on our feelings. Yeah. I just wanted to say that. No, thank you for saying that, babe. That's true, because I do that a lot. And I've heard that some from someone recently. Oh, yeah. Some pastor was saying that. Because it was like, even if you don't feel it, it doesn't mean that God didn't hear it. You know, or God isn't working on it or working in you or mm-hmm. whatever it is. And I yeah. felt that before where I didn't feel anything. But then I was like, oh, well, God answered this. Or, mm-hmm. or I still feel close to him. I don't know. It's like, you still are learning about him. That's why you read the Bible. You're learning about him. You're getting to know him. Mm. That's how you get to know God, just like how you get to know a friend or a partner or whatever it is. Mm. Um, It's like, I was thinking about medicine. Like, well, one, y'all, I despise. (laughs) (laughs) I hate taking medicine, especially liquid medicine. Jesus, help you. It is gross. Then eat healthy. But it made me think, though, like, think as much. when the medicine is inside, like, if I'm sick and the medicine is, like, in me, I don't feel the medicine as it's working. Hmm. All I know is I took it and then I feel better, like, after a while. But I don't, yeah. like, feel it in yeah. me, like, doing whatever it's doing. Mm. So I feel like that's kind of the same way with, like, prayer or reading the Bible. You know you did it. You don't feel anything working, but it it is. That's true, that is so true. So many times we prayed and we're like, oh, yeah, all right. So we did it, and then he answers. Yeah, he does something. That's so true. It's. I still makes me think about that one. Oh, it still makes me think about that one um story that our pastor Daniel Clinda said. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? Like with <laughs> with the one pastor who was like, um. He didn't necessarily believe. You know oh, like, he didn't be- like believe in the the work of the Holy Spirit or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't remember the story though. Man, uh, why do I keep starting <laughs> like this? <today? laughs> yeah. But I think okay, it was basically like he didn't really believe in the work of the Holy Spirit or something like that, or like that God Jesus can like move so powerfully in people, like the Holy Spirit can move so powerfully in people that they can like be knocked out or like, mm-hmm. you know, just just um just on their on the floor in the power of god right like right. just i don't know like totally feeling the weight or the holy spirit <laughs> just like can that's all they feel and that's all they can handle like that's on their own floor and stuff but but it was like he got prayed over or something to like receive the holy spirit or something like that like to to receive the power of god or something like that oh, yeah. and he's like guys i got prayed over and i didn't feel anything right and well, all right, I didn't feel anything. Right, and so right. then he went to go preach, and he was like, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to go preach. And it was like, as he was just saying something, he, like, wi- he like wiped his hand. Oh, like, his yeah. arm just crossed the room. Yeah. Like, his arm just went from one side of the room to the other. Yeah. And then all those people that his arm crossed over just fell to the ground with the arm <laughs> yeah, yeah, He was yeah. like, I don't even feel anything. Wipe. Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. It was like... <laughs> I didn't even feel God or the Holy yeah. Spirit come on me or anything, yeah. but I apparently did because all y'all felt it when I just wiped my hand across the room. Man. But anyway, I didn't say the story as well as him, but um, <laughs> that's but the point. You got the point across, yeah. But yeah. So the point is, it's like even if you don't, actually, it makes me think about this. So even yeah. if you don't feel the effects of your spiritual, like even if you don't feel the expect effects while you're working on your spiritual health, you will see the results in yeah. your life. Mm -hmm. And you will feel them eventually. It might not be in that moment. Sometimes it will, but, you know, it made me think about, like, working out or physical health. Like, you might not see your tone of results right away. Or, like, you might not feel, you might not even feel the burn. Sometimes Mm. you don't feel the burn, but that doesn't mean you Mm. didn't do anything. I so much crave when I'm lifting weights. Like, I want to feel the burn because then I feel like I did something and, like, I'm going to get the muscles. But sometimes I don't, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to get the muscles or I didn't, it didn't burn calories and it didn't burn fat. So. Yeah. 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 That's good that's stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that about does it. Yes. For episode three of the Simply Living podcast. Thanks for <laughs> hanging out with us today on your drive, in your living room, 
on your on your speaker. I don't know. However you're Watch listening, wherever you wait, work. maybe listening. Yes. Man, we appreciate you guys. Yes. And we pray that the Lord blesses you. Mm-hmm. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We'll catch you next time. Go get some raisin bran. Be efficient <laughs> on that porcelain throne. Oh my goodness. I don't know if I would necessarily recommend raisin bran as the <laughs> best source of fiber, but it does taste good and it does work. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. Okay, see ya. Bye. <laughs>